Hi guys, today's video will be about sampling and using probability trees. So the, to the objective today is to understand how to use probability trees when conducting samples or sampling. So firstly, what is a productivity uh, probability tree? So a probability tree provides a visual representation of multiple, multiple events that can occur at certain points in time. So the trees use nodes, uh, which represent each individual event and branches to show the allowable path or possible path from each node to another possible node, okay? So for example, if we want to flip a coin, um, our probability tree will look something like this. So we have heads and tails. So this would be our, these two would be our nodes, or node one. And then after that, we have these branches to show our possible outcomes or paths that can occur. So heads and tails. So for example, if we flip one head, um, our next sequence flip, we can get another head or another tail. And then uh, simil similarly, if we flip a tail, we can either get in our next flip a head or a tail. And that these are our branches that show the paths to these next to these other nodes. Okay. So then, if we flip a coin three times, we have a probability tree that looks something like this. Okay, so each one of these outcomes are our nodes and each one of these branches that show our allowable paths are, um, are branches to those nodes. Okay, so um, in order to use a probability tree, uh, we also sometimes put the probability of these events occurring on top of these branches. So for example, rolling, uh, flipping a head, flipping a tail gives us a probability of um, 0.5 or 50% risk respectively. And then we go on and we can do that to every single branch. And then that would help us find out the probability of a certain outcome occurring. So for example, if we wanted to find the probability of flipping three heads, this would just equal um, the probabilities on each branch. So it'd just be 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 on each branch, which would give us a probability of 0.125 or 12.5%. Okay, so the rules of using a probability tree. So rule number one, events are mutually exclusive. So no events can happen at the same time, um, i.e. only one branch per node. So um, for example, if you flipped a head in your first, uh, on your first flip of a coin, on your next flip of a coin, you can't flip both a head and a tail. They're, they're mutually exclusive, so only a head can occur or a tail can occur. Also, uh, the sum of all possible um, probabilities or the all, all possible outcomes, so for example, um, heads, 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 so the sequence of heads first, heads second, and heads third in your flips, or um, a sequence of getting heads first, heads second, and then tails first, um, they all these outcomes must be shown on the probability tree and all their respective probabilities when summed together must equal to one so that all possible events are displayed and accounted for in those or by those nodes. Okay, so then um, there's something called sampling with replacement. So what is sampling with replacement? Well, sampling with replacement involves taking random samples from a population in such a way that the sample space always remains the same. So, if, um, in other words, when a population element uh, can be selected more than once, because after it is selected, it is either returned to the population or replaced with an identical element. So, for example, if we have um, two cards, uh, if we're going to draw two cards from a deck, what is the probability of drawing a heart and then a club, assuming that we uh, sample with replacement? Okay, so if we divide this up into clubs, hearts, uh, spades, and diamonds, okay, uh, we can either get a club, heart, spade, or diamond, and we apply this to everything here. So then what is the probability of us, okay, you know, of drawing a club would equal to uh, 13 in 52 and then after that if we've drawn a club um, because we are sampling we are sampling with replacement uh, we then once we draw that club we return that club into the deck so that um, if it does occur we can draw that club up again so that would mean that um, the rest of these 
nodes or outcomes will have an equal chance of happening again. So the probabilities on top of each branch would be 13 and 52. So therefore the probability of getting a heart and a club, assuming that we're replacing them, would just equal the probability of a heart times the probability of getting a club, which would equal to uh, 1 in 4 or 13 in 52 times 13 in 52, which equals 13, in, uh, 13 over 52 squared. That gives us 1 in 16 as the probability. Okay, now sampling without replacement is the opposite. So instead of um, getting, instead of drawing that, um, drawing that heart and then putting it back, we actually draw that heart and keep that heart forever. So as a result, the sample space or the number of cards that we can actually draw is uh, lowered. Um, so it reduces by one. So, for, uh, so then for our next draw, there are only 51 cards to pick from and 12 hearts to pick from. Okay, so sampling without replacement. This involves taking a random sample from a population in such a way that the sample space would decrease with each sample taken. So, um, for example, uh, sorry, um, in simpler terms, uh, when a population element can only be selected once, so for example, that two of hearts that you drew, uh, because R3 is selected, you don't replace it and you keep it forever. Now that deck is missing a two of hearts and you only have 12 hearts left and 51 cards left to pick from. Okay, so then if we try to work out the probability um, of, a, of drawing two cards from a deck, the probability of drawing a heart and then a club, if we do our, um, we draw our probability tree, it would look something like this, our respective nodes, so we draw a heart first, okay, club, heart, spade, then a diamond, okay, so the probability of drawing the heart first would have been 13 on 52, Okay, so, and then after, because there's no replacement, there's only 51 cards left, so the probability of drawing a club actually increases. So there's 13 clubs left, and there's only 51 um, cards left in the deck, so the, um, the, the probability of drawing a club increases, but the probability of drawing another heart decreases, because there are only 12, um, 12 hearts left out of the 51 um, 51 uh, cards left in the deck, okay? So therefore the probability of drawing a heart and a club would equal the probability of um, just drawing the heart plus the probability of drawing a club um, without replacement. So this would equal to 13 on 52 times 13 on 51, which would equal times 13 on 51 equal to 0 0.064 uh, or 13 on 204, which is um, slightly larger than the, um, the value that we got here because we, uh, because we did replace it. Okay, so that's the end of the video today, guys. I hope you learned something. Thank you. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.